Greetings friends, Edbud here and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I would appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below as to when new videos are launched and hit that like button. Today I'm very excited to give you my initial views and opinions on the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. This one's finally arrived, I ordered it about two weeks ago and it finally arrived this week. I do appreciate Brooks have been fantastic in supplying many, many shoes in their initiative to lots of key workers, frontline care workers, medical staff, etc. And that's a fantastic thing. And I'm quite happy to wait my two weeks to pick these up. Obviously they were getting deliveries out to everybody else. Well done to you Brooks for doing that. What a fantastic gesture. So we have a new foam midsole here. I believe the foam is injected with nitrogen to give it its special properties. That could explain the slightly strange smell that emanates from the shoe. It's only 240 grams in my UK size 11. That translates to about 8.4 ounces. So certainly comparable to the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 in terms of weight, and perhaps even the Fuel Cell Rebel from New Balance. After seeing the very disappointing reviews about the Brooks Hyperion Elite, I instantly dropped my interest in that one. Not a shoe for me. It's not really something that I think I could use. But many runners have showed some considerable excitement for this Tempo offering from Brooks. I think the Elite 2 is supposed to use the same midsole foam. Certainly a very simple and light upper here in terms of my initial impressions. Let's get out there and start the initial grind away of the shoe. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm wearing the hat, it's freezing here in the studio again. Uh, summer's clearly been and gone, and the toque has had to come back. I've actually done two initial runs for this shoe. One at six miles, seven minutes, 27 per mile, and the second one, seven miles, at seven minutes, 27 per mile. Hey, at least I'm consistent. So let's get to my initial review. In terms of the upper first, certainly very happy with the fit. When I first slid my foot into the shoe, it's a great fit from this upper, from the Hyperion Tempo. I'd certainly classify this as true to size. In a UK size 11, for me, there was ample room in the toe box. I didn't have that similar, slightly too short feeling that I get in New Balance shoes, and sometimes Adidas as well. I'm certainly not experiencing a feeling that I'd refer to as narrow. I think the upper design on this shoe is absolute dynamite. It's really simple, sleek, very impressive. I actually thought when I got the package that there weren't any shoes in there. It really is a light shoe. Mrs. Edbud, in fact, suggested that she thought it was one of the lightest shoes she can remember holding. Not sure she's been in here and seen all the other shoes. A pretty light shoe. It certainly, to me, looks a bit like a dark chocolate bounty bar, but with hints of the standard blue version of the bounty. Really fancy one of those now. Lockdown over the top of the foot was fantastic. I was a little hesitant about the slightly odd bobbled laces. They've got these little protrusions on them, but these work fine for me. Once you cinch them down, I had a great fit. I did actually lace the shoes up, so I used all the eyelets. I didn't use a runner's knot this time, but I found that gave me a really good lockdown with the Hyperion Tempo. Just really felt right to do that with this model. Don't normally do that with shoes. Normally they creep up a little bit too far towards my ankle and it doesn't really feel that comfortable, but it did in this one. Perhaps a little like one of your favorite albums where you need to listen to every single track to truly get the feel of the album. Something like that anyway. The upper is as soft as beast's fur. And the tongue's got a little extra padding down through the middle there to relieve any pressure and tension on the top of your foot. Got to protect those metatarsals. There's an atypical heel counter here, but only very minimal padding around the back of the foot. Everything's just minimized here. I do like that. It does remind me a little bit in terms of the upper of a Adidas shoe, actually. Certainly very breathable. You can probably see, certainly a very breathable toe box. You can see all the vent holes there at the front. 45 in total. Hmm. 
Yes, I did count them. You have this felt effect Brooks logo on the very side of the shoe. So no drawbacks for me. On my two initial runs, one of which was quite wet, one was relatively humid in the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. For me, in my initial review, it's a three out of three on the upper. Onto that nitrogen infused midsole now. What a great world it is when you can say sentences like that. So initial runs were a six mile effort at seven minutes, 27 seconds per mile, and then a seven mile effort at exactly the same tempo. Gotta be honest, first two initial runs in this shoe were slightly odd. It felt like I was having to put a lot more effort considerable amount more effort actually to get up to that tempo pace than perhaps normal. It might have been the donuts and the biscuits and the general lethargic feeling that I had perhaps. Maybe it wasn't the shoe. I felt a little like Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill only for it to just fall back down again. When I put more effort into trying to get to that tempo pace. I then felt really tired on the next mile and it was kind of one of those feelings for the first couple of miles at least. Felt like I was working a little too hard to get to that tempo pace and then I paid for it just after, which is odd. Certainly that pace has been a lot easier. So a bit of a vicious circle really. But on mile three, things started to fall into place a little more. I think the shoe commands you to up your cadence a little bit. And I do think that is down to the midsole material. I believe there's an eight mil drop on this shoe. For me, it felt a lot flatter than that. It felt like a lower drop shoe. That small increase in cadence gave me a much more enjoyable experience in the shoe. And I then hit splits of 725, 725, 725, and 727 for the final mile. It was a very similar experience in my second run in the shoe also. So not as an explosive of foam or experience as I expected from the shoe. I think this is probably called the tempo for a reason. I found it perfect really at that tempo pace or at least just under that. And I was able to just keep rolling for miles. Didn't even bother with the headphones. At the moment I've been listening to a lot of music and podcasts while I go out running, but I just ditched those and just ran and concentrated on breathing. And the second run I think was probably a awful lot more enjoyable. I think rhythmic like a Roland drum machine almost. It was that consistent. The midsole, as I mentioned before, is a little firmer than I expected, but it does have some energy return there. I would suggest it's probably closer to something like the ASICS Evo ride though, rather than the Fuel Cell Rebel or the TC. It's certainly not near ZoomX kind of category. I really wanted to get out for that second run to give a truer and more honest opinion about the midsole. I've got to be honest though, I'm probably going to give this one a two out of three for midsole. So onto the outsole now. It's another one of these midsole, outsole situations. You've got these rubber sections in the forefoot and midfoot, and then another one in the heel. And this strange cutaway, probably to help vent water out from the front of the shoe to the back. The rubber, as you can see, is actually very, very thin on the Hyperion Tempo. It is wafer thin. I felt good traction with the shoe. The various patterns and ridges in the outsole are deep enough to provide some reasonable grip and they handled paths, gravel and grass without any problems. Certainly more stable on grass than the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. That's just like wearing a pair of skis. I felt like Eddie the Eagle in that one. The rubber's quite soft actually and malleable. It'll be very interesting to see how it holds up over more miles. I can tell this one really is gonna be a staple tempo shoe for me. Maybe even a shoe I can use on a daily basis as well. So I'm gonna give the outsole on the Hyperion Tempo my initial review 2.5 out of 3. On to value now. So at £140 I'd be expecting this shoe to be on point. Did I get that? So it's certainly a little cheaper than the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 but I find that shoe far easier to get up to higher paces than this one. It was great at tempo pace but I'm not sure at higher paces that this midsole foam is for me. It's certainly not as snappy or as fast feeling underfoot as the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. And I think it felt more akin to the Beacon midsole or perhaps even the 1080 V10 midsole. So I don't think this is a shoe I'm gonna pull out for intervals or threshold efforts. Perhaps some more testing needed there. I will take it out on one of those and see how it fares. My initial view is that it ain't gonna fare that well. It's just not enough energy return there for me to even get it near that category of the Rebel or the Pegasus Turbo 2. Well, what with it being about 25 grams heavier than something like the Takumi Sen 6, you do feel it. So I think 140 pounds just for a very tempo focused shoe is a lot of dough. A little pricey for me from that aspect for a shoe that perhaps isn't going to be the most versatile. That side, it 
did work at a more daily recovery pace of around about eight minutes per mile. I'm gonna give this one a 1.5 out of three for value. So for my initial review of the Hyperion Tempo from Brooks, I give it a nine out of 12 overall. If you've got any questions about this one, please place them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. An Ed Bud video wouldn't be complete without a musical interlude. So with Radiohead recently releasing a load of different live shows on YouTube, I've been getting back into listening to their tunes. Some of them are really great actually for longer runs. I dug this one out, which is an EP from them called the Airbag EP. It was originally released in 1998. The great thing about this one is it's got this bizarre survey that you can fill in. Loads of tick boxes and stuff inside. I just thought it was really interesting. There's some really strange tunes on here. I mean, Airbag, everybody knows that from OK Computer. But the fantastic Meeting in the Isle, Polyethylene and Palo Alto were all great tunes. Radiohead actually getting back into some of their rocky roots on some of the B-sides on this EP. So do check that out and also head over to their YouTube site and you can check out some of those fantastic live shows that they've been placing up for free to keep everyone occupied during the lockdown. Okay, that's all for me for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. I'd just like to say a big, big thank you for all of you who have subscribed recently. We've just hit 5,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. My heartfelt thanks goes out to all of you who have subscribed, all of you have been watching, and for all the really positive comments. There's been some fantastic discussion going on in those comments, and that's one of the things at the moment. We're all lacking that kind of social interaction, that ability to discuss and talk about things with each other. And that's happening down there, and that really means a lot to me. So thank you. Mrs. Ed Budd will make an appearance very soon. Okay, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. Hit the like button and comment below. Share this one with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.